So today I'm going to talk about uh, temperature, and in particular, the way temperature changes matter, the states of matter. There are three states of matter. We either have solid matter, or liquid matter, or gaseous matter. Solids are things that don't change their shape very quickly. If you put something, if you put a solid into a vessel, it will just stay in the bottom. It won't take the shape of the vessel. If you pour a liquid into a vessel, then the liquid will take the shape of the vessel, but it won't fill it right to the top. Uh, if you put a gas into a vessel, then the gas will fill the whole thing. And so the difference between the gas, the solid, and liquid is a question of how they change with time. Now, liquids flow very quickly. Solids don't flow at all. They don't make the shape of a container. So the difference between a solid and a liquid is that the liquid flows to make the change, to reach the change of shape of the container. If you take a liquid like treacle, which you can pour out onto your porridge in the morning, at normal room temperatures, it will pour quite freely. But if you take that treacle and put it into a bath of ice, then that treacle will become very slowly flowing. It will become almost like a glass. It will become a solid-like material. In contrast, if you take rock, which has come from the center of the earth, where it's very, very hot, then that rock is liquid, and that comes out through volcanoes as something which we call lava. And then that lava, which is liquid rock, when that cools, that will become solid rock. So there's a very big change in the way things flow as you change the temperature. Now we know what's a hot day and what's a cold day, uh, what materials feel hot and other materials feel very cold, uh, but of course we'd like to have more precise measurement of that. We'd like to know not just that it's a hot day today, but how hot it is. And in science, of course, you need very precise measurements of hot and cold, and technology as well. So people were interested in how they have an accurate measure of temperature. And the first thing they thought about was to use the volume of a gas. And the reason for this is that the volume of a gas is very sensitive to temperature. So here's some air in a balloon, and I've got here a cold liquid, so I'm going to dip the balloon and cool it in the liquid here. So what do you think is going to happen to the size of my balloon as I cool it down? 